boom, that thing is 30 seconds long and it just pow, ends right there. Dead end. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Toby Eunice. I'll be your host tonight. Um, and we're going to talk about small set photography, but most importantly, we're going to talk about a shot that I recently took and uploaded to both Instagram and Facebook. Um, I called it Red Velvet Valentine's. And I'll show you the shot. I'll show you a photo of the behind the scenes. I've got a video behind the scenes. And then what I'd like to do is introduce you to our Amazon store where all these products are listed. So you don't have to go looking for them. Um, when you buy from our Amazon store, you don't pay anything extra. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Uh, if you're a prime member, you get the benefit of uh, free shipping and things like that. Um, but Amazon gives us a small commission on your purchase. So. That's why we uh, showed in our Amazon store. Plus, it, it kind of shows you we've actually bought these products, right? We've not only used them, but we bought them from Amazon uh, because it's easy because they ship to your front door, which is kind of cool. Everything you need to know about Video Tarot is in the crawl that's going across the bottom of the screen below. Um, it has our uh, directions to our YouTube channel now. Tonight, we're going to, I think, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five channels. We're going to my personal Facebook page, the Video Tarot Facebook page, Shelly Carney's um, LinkedIn profile, uh, Video Tarot on YouTube, and Video Tarot on Twitter. So, um, And all of those links are scrolling on the screen below me, as I said. Uh, so record them. Uh, the store is in there. Our phone number is in there. So if you want to leave us a, a voicemail message, I might, if we get any people in tonight, I might open up the phone lines. You can call and ask questions, which some people like, I know. If not, uh, post your questions in the chat room and I'll make sure that I get to them before the end of the evening. I'm going to ask now that you please take this opportunity to like our video. People like it when you like it. YouTube likes it when you like it. Share it with your family, friends, your neighbors, your business associates, the entirety of your social media network, and that way we can grow the channel. And finally, if you are not already a subscriber on either Facebook, a follower on Facebook, or a subscriber on YouTube, and a follower on Twitter, please subscribe so that when we do uh, our shows on Wednesday, I'm sorry, Thursday evenings, uh, you can join us. They'll uh, let you know you'll be, you'll get everything in advance and be as a result in the know. So it's kind of cool. And then, um, we also like to point out that the super, if you're on YouTube, the super chat light is lit. Uh, if you don't know what a super chat is, it's a way to donate to our little project here. Uh, I think the minimum is 99 cents, but hey, go big. Go big or go home. Uh, and all you have to do is go down to scroll down to the bottom of the chat window and you'll see a stylized but grayed out dollar sign there. Uh, click on that dollar sign and YouTube will walk you through making a donation to us, which we think is uh, very cool. It shows up in our YouTube check, which arrives around the end of the, I'm, I'm sorry, the 20th of the month following. So everything that we earn in February will show up on March 20th. Isn't that nice of YouTube? So I'm going to go back and watch the comments here. I think I've got everything aligned so you guys can follow us. Again, if you uh, have any uh, comments, please post them in the chat room. Regardless of what platform you're on, I see them uh, all on here, right? And you'll see me making a comment. So here's our Amazon store, for example. Go to store.videotero.com. And that should post to all the Facebook pages and all the YouTube channels. So. So if you chat in Facebook or you chat in uh, YouTube, I'll be able to see it. All right. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about. I'm going to share my screen now, and I'm going to take you to an album that I have online in the Video Tarot Photos, and I can give you a link to this later. I thought I had posted it in here. Let me do that while I'm thinking about it. Otherwise, um, I'm going to share this, and we're going to get a link and we're going to copy that link. And I'm going to put that in the chat room. So if you want to see these uh, two photos that I put up here, you're welcome to go and do that, all right? So that's a, that's a uh, Google Photos uh, folder up on the interwebs. So this is a photo that we're talking about. And again, I posted it to last night. I posted it to Instagram. I shot it last night. Um, posted it to Instagram and to Facebook simultaneously. I call it red velvet valentines because i was trying to go for the valentine's uh, look but here's what i discovered i am a significantly better photographer than i am a baker now 
I do have one of my daughters, my youngest daughter, did go to culinary art school and she did study baking for college degree length of time. Uh, she worked at it for a year before she found out that the hours are just terrible uh, and then went into high tech, which is where she is now and been happier ever since. So uh, the reason I called her Red Velvet is because, and what we're going to tell a little bit of a baking story here, is because I went to the store and I had this, uh, what happened is usual. I don't know whether you've heard me talk about this in the past. I get my ideas when I go to a store called Savers. Or is it Shoppers? I think it's Savers. And it's uh, basically a thrift store. It's a secondhand store, but it's a chain and they're big. Uh, they're bigger than... I don't know, Goodwill, but they're, they're, I don't think they're nonprofit. I think they're a profit-making organization. And, um, and so they have the store, as usual, divided into all these areas from books to clothing, to men's clothing, women's clothing, children's clothing, toys. But one of the sections is household. And uh, what I've discovered is that if I walk in there on a Saturday morning and look around in the, I'm, I'm not sorry, it's not household, it's housewares, housewares. Uh, and if I walk around just a little bit, I'll find something in the housewares uh, section that triggers my imagination. Like uh, in this case, it, were, it was a pair of the aluminum pans that you see in the photo there. It was a pair of these aluminum pans that were kind of beat up and hadn't been cleaned after their last use. Um, but between the two of them, they, were, they had a heart shape in them. And between the two of them, um, uh, there were eight slots, and I think the, the pair cost $1.99. So right away, things started going in my head. It's getting, it, it was by this, at this point, it was the end of January. But I knew Valentine's was coming up, and I wanted to shoot some Valentine's photos. Uh, still lives, uh, whether they were, um, you know, straight up or, or uh, what this, this is called, flat lay. And um, so I had this vision that what I was going to do was take the pans, I was going to, make some little miniature cakes. And then I was going to uh, ice them in red icing and sprinkle them with Valentine's Day. Through. And I thought, well, that's a pretty good idea. Not knowing A, anything about B, baking, and B, whether all of that that I had hoped for actually existed. And I didn't know that. So I went to the local grocery store. My, my I have a choice between Walmart and Albertson. Sometimes I go to Walmart just because they have more stuff. And I went looking, and, and that's when I found the red velvet cake mix. Uh, it looked pretty easy. Little you, you use water, oil, and eggs, right? But I thought, well, wouldn't that be cool to be red? And then right below that, I found this selection of icings. One of them happened to be the holiday theme, Valentine's icing that was, as you can see, bright red. I did not make that icing. I bought that icing. And then right next to it was a selection of sprinkle things. And one of the sprinkle things was the Valentine sprinkle thing. So everything worked out. I found everything, found the cake pants. Then what I had to worry about is the kind of shot that I wanted. Well, I got to tell you, uh, we were going to do this shot. My business partner, Shelly Carney, and I, who may show up later here, uh, we're going to do this shot uh, yesterday afternoon after we had a our regular show at one o'clock. We had a business meeting at two. And we figured after that, we'll take it on. Well, the, my initial idea was um, to bake some of the cakes, to ice some of the cakes, and then shoot them and have her with her hand in the shot, sprinkling the sprinkles on the icing. And we worked at that for three hours, right? It was, but she doesn't usually have dinner here. And I hadn't prepared dinner when she, when she's going to be here late, I'll prepare a dinner and she gets to eat, but I didn't. And I knew she was getting hungry. And so we went from like about three o'clock to about six o'clock trying to get this shot. And, and she made a couple of recommendations, even including maybe you should do a, a flat lay. And what surprised me, of course, is she's not, she's not a photographer. She's, she doesn't do any of this work, but she is very stylish and is a good stylist. And so she said flat lay, and I, I, I argued the point by saying, no, that's not, I want the sprinkles. If you, do the, if you do the flat lay, you lose that effect, the sprinkles effect, because the hand is in the shot, but it's covering what it's doing, right? So I, I had an argument. I, you know what? I, I, it's not an argument. I just know I want to do it this way. It's probably more stubborn than anything. So yeah. So stubbornly, I said, no, I want it this way. And then around six o'clock, she asked, 
a really good question. And she's very good at this. She's very good at asking the question that can be incisive at the right, uh, at exactly the right time. And the question was, what story are you trying to tell? And when it came, I, the, the thing was the sprinkles, the integrate, you know, the woman's hand sprinkling on the wonderful Valentine's Day thing. And, and it, there, there, a, there wasn't much of a story, and B, there was no good way to get that story in the shot that is straight on, even if it's at a 45-degree angle. And I was having to prog progressively raise my camera to a higher angle because we couldn't, we had to in order to get the effects of the, the, the to get them to almost look like hearts. Now, you can see, we'll talk about my bad baking skills in just a minute. But, so there was a point, I think we tried, I don't know, 10 minutes longer because she does a, a lot of my styling, which she's here. I mean, I can do my own styling, but when she's here, she adds uh, to the conversation because she has her own uh, style and, and she has, she's a woman. So her perspective on these things is slightly different. Um, so we tried a little bit longer and by six o'clock, I know she's hungry. I got to get her home. Uh, Kevin is already uh, texting her like, uh, you're going to be home soon, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so we quit. And I left everything set up. I left the the, the set set up um, along with some of the, you know, lighting and light modifiers. So um, I let it go um, until about 10 o'clock at night, which is not unusual for me. And by 11, I had reset everything in a flat lay. So I wasn't shooting head on. I was shooting over the subject flatly, just like you see it there. And, um, and it started looking pretty good to me. So I started adding elements like she had recommended, you know, put, put the, uh, the uh, cakes in a different location and maybe a plate. And then she had the idea about that glass, uh, that heart shaped glass container. It's basically like, like a candy dish, but she thought about, she suggested I had, I had some roses that were about to go that I'd used in another shot. And she suggested we put them in there. So I, I filled that with water and put the roses in there. And then Shelly had brought over several weeks ago, actually that red shaped uh, votive candle holder. It's red glass. And so things started to work out. And then, and then there was some point when she was here before six o'clock, she said, where's your red rag she calls it it's a rag and it is a rag kind of but it's made from cheesecloth it's dyed cheesecloth and so it started coming together very very cool so i started throwing the sprinkles i know i uh, i like to say it's it's mandy photo when mandy of uh, replica surfaces she, they sprinkle on these things although i think a lot of food photographers do it anyway so i threw some sprinkles in there and it started coming together pretty nice so then uh, it was a matter of lighting, and I'm a big fan of soft boxes, but I, I went with a 24 by 24 as opposed to the 12 by 30. And and on the other side is reflector. So let me show you this setup. That That's how I got to this point. And I counted the shots. I always count the shots that gets me to the photo that I want. It was 46 before I got uh, 46 shots before I got to the photo I want. And, and that's because I use my uh, iPad as my... Um, Connected to my camera is my, um, there's a name for it. I just forgot it. Uh, tether. I tether it to my iPad wire, wirelessly. There is no, it, it uses uh, Wi-Fi because the Lumix camera generates, generates its own Wi-Fi signal. So it connects, it tethers to my iPad or any other computer for that matter um, wirelessly. And then there's a, Lumix has an app that you can download and connect to it. So that's what, the photo look like. Let me show you a little bit about what the setup looked like. And I, I've got a video that gives a little bit more detail. So this is a newer 25, 24 by 24 soft box. And people, when I teach, uh, I used to teach photography classes in Virginia and they'd always say, why do you put your light so close? And the answer is it's softer. The further you put it away, it's not a matter of intensity. Uh, the further you put it away, this, the harsher it gets, the more, the more, um, uh, well, harsher, uh, and it creates hard shadows. When you put it this close, uh, and you, of course, have to control the light in order to get right, right kind of light, it creates the soft shadow look. And you can see in the picture that you'd think that with a big flash behind that, and but if you look right here, 
right in this area here and here, you can see those shadows are very, very, very soft. If you put it further away, those shadows get harsher, okay? So then on the other side, I need a little bit of fill for this thing. Otherwise, it goes very, very dark because it's that uh, sheet pan replica surface, and it's dark by nature. But if you don't light it up, it gets, it gets progressively darker. Um, and so I put a uh, gold reflector. And I'm, I, I use the gold reflector a lot. It gives a very warm look to it. You can see right over here on this side how that's filled in, that light is filled in. If you didn't do it, and I put a, I think I put a vignette on, on this image, uh, but you can see that light right there is a lot warmer than the white light that's coming off the, um, off the uh, softbox and flash. So to feed the softbox, I had my, and I'm, I'll show you more in just a minute. I had my um, uh, speed light. Uh, that's a Godox speed light meant for the Lumix camera, for the Panasonic uh, cameras. And then as you can see, I've got the camera tethered to my iPad. And that's how I control it. And the cool thing about having the iPad is I can walk all the way around this set as I need to do different things, holding my iPad. And then when I like it, I can just hit the button on the iPad. It takes a shot. So you can also control, you can, can completely control the camera using their application from, you know, shutter speed to whether you want a vivid image or a standard image, et cetera. It's, it's very complete. What you can't do with the iPad is you can't control the flash. And I'll show you where that comes in in just a minute because we're going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about that. But you can see the basic setup. It's a pretty simple setup. It's my, my kitchen. I don't have a studio. My kitchen is my studio and my kitchen table is my studio layout on a you know table i do have one of the uh, replica surfaces um, um studios ordered and i was in on the second shipment and i think we got a message either yesterday or the day before where mandy said they're expecting them to arrive in texas on monday and then they'll start shipping after that so i expect it's going to be I don't know, a week, maybe two before I get it. I'm looking forward to it so I can, so I don't have to mess with my kitchen table and, and take it apart every night. So that's the setup that I used to get this photograph. Now you, you're seeing it with the lights on when the, um, when I'm taking the shot, the, I, I turn the lights off and there's a soft, uh, you know, desk lamp in the living room that, because I have that one long continuous kitchen to living room thing. And, um, and it creates enough light for me to see what I'm doing. Uh, and the light switch on the wall is over to the right here. So uh, if I need to turn it on, I can do that again because I'm tethered to the uh, iPad. Um, I can just walk around with it. So, all right. So let's go back. And uh, what I want to do is I made a short video. Let me go back to that. And I'm going to walk you through the setup with uh, this video. All right. It's a couple of minutes long. It's not too long. Let me play that for you. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Toby Yunus with Video Tarot. And uh, today I wanted to, we're going to be talking about some of the products that you're going to see kind of in this preview. Uh, but I wanted you to see them and said, that's the shot that we were talking about, the uh, what I call the uh, Red Velvet Valentines. But I want to show you what I had to do to get that shot. First of all, uh, I'm using the replica surfaces, um, surface, in this case, it's called a sheet pan. And I thought that was appropriate for the kind of, you know, shoot that we were doing today. Uh, and I've done it, as you saw in the image, as a flat lay, which means I have to put my camera directly over um, the set in order to get the flat lay shot that I want. So in order to do that, I have to use this Linko boom arm. Sorry for my messy kitchen. Uh, I have to use this Linko boom arm, and at the end of that boom arm, in order to balance out uh, the camera, uh, they provide you this bag, this uh, canvas bag, and I've got a gallon, I'm sorry, a half gallon water bottle in there uh, with water in it to give it weight. And of course, you can see my Lumix G100 up there, and on top of the Lumix G100, I'm going to walk around this side, and on top of the Lumix G100, you'll see the Godox uh, X-Pro uh, wireless flash controller, uh, which I highly recommend. Now there is a flash behind that Godox 24 inch square softbox. Uh, there's a Godox 860V uh, flash. Um, and I'll go on the other side so that you can see that. 
let me go back over here. That's going to be interesting getting around there. So actually, I'm going to have to do that. So let me walk around my kitchen table. My kitchen is my studio. So right. OK. So I wanted also uh, for you to see uh, this gold reflector that provides all the fill light that I need on that side. I mean, it's very warm because it's gold. We'll talk about those. Uh, that's a pop-up reflector. It folds down to about the size of a dinner plate. I just noticed that my, um, I use my uh, iPad to communicate with the camera. It's basically tethered wirelessly. Let me pop that open again here. There we go. So it's tethered wirelessly. So I don't, once the camera is set up over the shot, you can see right here, it's tethered wirelessly to my iPad, and I just use my iPad to control everything, uh, set lighting. Oh, this, I don't know whether you can see it, but it's flashing red that my camera is about to lose its battery. So there's the shot. I use this Godox 24-inch um, softbox, and oh, I'm sorry, this one's a newer, newer. And, but uh, Godox makes the same uh, exact product. As a matter of fact, I think I have it listed in our Amazon store. And then I use these uh, Godox 860V860 flashes, uh, which are very good and as good as, honestly, any other brand name flash that I've ever used. So that's kind of the setup. We're going to be talking about each of the components. My light stands are also newer. They're the uh, stainless steel light stands. They're a little bit chunkier than your average light stand and can, uh, especially if you have to deal with this kind of weight. So I'll tell you more about the setup as we go on uh, with the show. Okay, thanks. So I didn't realize how messy my kitchen was in the background. So forgive me for that. I'm a, I'm a bachelor, so not exactly. I suppose it could be better. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I think I'm going to open up our Amazon store and. Um, the Amazon store you can find at store.videotero.com. Uh, and it'll take you, we do have a number of sub stores. Um, this is the store for our books. So if you ever want to buy one of our books, you're welcome to do that. This was an Amazon Live January uh, electronics event special, as was this. We do, we have our own live streaming studio and people ask us what's in our studio. So that's that. Um, studio lighting kit, which is what you're looking at, this light coming from here. So there are some other sub lists in there for things that we use and that we've uh, tested and approved. If it's in the store, uh, A, we've used it, and B, we like it. If we haven't used it, uh, except for these, because Amazon asked us to go and, and do all these other items as well. But everything you see here. Uh, in the small set photography store. And I guess I could post, if I post that link without going to, let me just put that in the chat room. And I'll put these in the description box as well. So that's the small set photography store. Now, I didn't use a, a tripod in this particular case, so we're not going to talk about that tonight, nor did I use uh, the Benro uh, three-way tripod head. But I got to tell you, between that tripod, which is the Manfrotto uh, 190, X Pro uh, and that Benro three-way head, uh, that's almost a mandatory for uh, small set photography just for your uh, ability to control it. But you did see the Selen's um, reflectors. So these are five-in-one reflectors. And what you get, and let me see which one it is right here. So what you get is this one in the middle. And that's a, it's a stretched translucent. So if you want to run a flash through it, you can, you can do it like that. And then the other four, you don't actually get five ovals or squares in my case. You get uh, one stiff plain one, and that's the translucent one. And then you get uh, a, a jacket, for lack of a better way to describe it. And on one side of the jacket, you have black and silver. And the other side of the jacket, you have gold and white. And so whatever you need at any given time, you just take the jacket off. If you're, if you, if you're, uh, if you're on white and you want gold, you take the jacket off and uh, turn the jacket. And of course you can turn it around. Now, when I bought mine, they had a 24 by 24 inch. And you, you, if you look at the, if we go back to the picture, you'll see 
that it's square, minus square, with the two handles on the top. Well, after I bought that, for some reason or the other, they uh, they're no they haven't been in stock since. So the next size up is this 24 by 36 inch. Now they do make a 24 inch round. Let me see here it is. And that might be uh, good as well. I don't see it, but you see, there's no more squares anymore. I don't know what happened. Don't know why, don't know what happened, but they literally just disappeared after I bought this uh, set. So, but you can get these and they work very nicely with the handles and things like that. There is a smaller triangular set. Let me see if that's on here as well. That's not in our store, but it, you know, it might be more convenient. So there is a smaller round set, the smaller triangular set. Uh, but this is the 24 by 36 and it's only 30 bucks. I mean, um, so it's, it's not badly priced uh, at all. The other thing that I'm going to strongly recommend that you get is uh, the uh, Selen's reflectors don't come with these. And um, did I open it? Yeah. So these are the newer two-piece portable studio photography clamps. So what, what they're designed to do is uh, if you don't have a way, and I, you know, I spend most of my time alone on, uh, Shelly comes over on Wednesdays and Thursdays and we work together, but the rest of the time on my own. So I don't have anybody to hold a reflector. What these do, uh, it's a pair for $13 or 48 cents. And what these do is they have a clamp, a spring clamp that clamps on the edge of the reflector. The, the, the frame on the reflector is a metal ribbon for lack of a better way to describe that. And these things spring right onto that metal ribbon clamp right there. You can see, you know, take your fingers and you squeeze them. Did I bring one in here? No. You take your fingers and you squeeze them and that clamps on. So when you order your reflectors, you, uh, do yourself a favor, order a light stand and these uh, clamps uh, so that if you're working alone, um, you don't have to have someone there to hold them for you. Real easy. Like I said, they come with two of them. That's That's the idea there. Now, the disadvantage is they only hold your reflectors kind of straight up and down, right? They're not designed to hold the thing at an angle. So if you have the kind of shot where you're doing, uh, you know, straight up and down reflectors, that's fine. Let's talk for a minute about the um, Godox V860. This is, I have a pair of these um, and uh, I've had them for a couple of years now. Uh, for years and years, I was a Nikon user and I bought all their lenses, all their speed flashes, et cetera, et cetera. And just like Nikon and Canon and Sony, they were, it was really, really good equipment. You couldn't argue with it, but it was expensive. And so when I went over to one of the reasons I went over to uh, Panasonic Lumix cameras was, uh, first of all, I wasn't a working photographer anymore. It was after I had retired and I just wanted something a little bit more compact, maybe a little bit less expensive. Um, but the other thing too is Nikon wasn't moving forward as, as rapidly as some other companies with their, uh, digital video, uh, capabilities. They were really behind the times and it was, you know, where everybody was shooting, uh, you know, full HD 1920 by 1080. Nikon was still uh, 1280 by 720 at 30 frames. And so they just, it took them a while to catch up. Now they're up to it now but it's still an expensive camera. So uh, I started looking, once I got to the Lumix cameras, I started looking for alternatives. And this one uh, was, Godox is a well-known lighting company. And let me, I'm gonna go back to uh, full screen so you can see this. So this is the Godox 860. And it's got an L, can you see it? Will you be able to see it? Yeah, LED panel, very informative LED panel, buttons across the top. The, this list right here shows you what each button represents, but one of the cool things about it is it has an onboard receiver, right? So you can set up several of these and you can control it. Something else. Let me pull this off here so you can see it. So this is the Godox. I think the batteries, I think I killed the battery today because I left it on. Yeah, I did. So this is the Godox. Uh, flash transmitter, speed light transmitter. With this, there's uh, eight channels and each channel has eight sets. So you can control up to 64 flashes. Now I've never had a reason to do that. Couldn't afford 64 flashes, but it handles controlling two flashes just perfectly. Uh, and so if you're using one as a key light, 
and the other is a fill light, you, you never have to leave your camera. You just control everything from right here with the X-Pro. All right. So that's one of the benefits. Uh, the other benefit is that although I wore these batteries out because I left them on, it uses uh, AA cells. And I don't know, they seem to last forever. It doesn't do a lot of work. It sends out a transmitter signal. But here's what's great about these guys. For any, anybody who shot flash before, especially if you use those AA cells, and you know they pack four or sometimes six in there, you, you're, you will go through a, four sets of AA cells in one night of being at the U.S. Marine Corps birthday ball. This is a lithium ion battery that literally goes not through hundreds, but thousands of shots. I took a pair of these uh, to the Marine Corps ball. Uh, that night, I probably shot somewhere between 200 and 300 photos. And uh, that battery lasted another month worth of, of still life shots uh, because of that lithium. Now, I do have spares. I have two spares. I have two flashes with their batteries, plus I have two battery spares uh, that I can replace if I had to. But you don't have to do it that often. It's really an amazing flash. It's heavy. It's well built. Uh, it's got some very nice features, including its own integrated uh, bounce card and uh, flash diffuser on the front. So it's got some very nice features. Now it comes, as you can see in the kit, it comes with a case. It uh, comes with this kind of a fold soft box thing that I haven't I haven't used, uh, and then it comes with some colored gels. But they're they're uh, they're not easy to use. You ha you have to use a Velcro strap, and I, I, and I'm not a big fan of gels anyway. But um, it can rotate upwards up to you know in that case in 90 degrees, and it'll rotate all the way around 180 degrees in either direction. So uh, it's a very very good flash. I would recommend this to anyone who's wanting to get a flash for their camera. And then if you get more than one, I think this is like 69 bucks. So that the the, the, the um, speed light is $179. And I think the, the um, yeah, the wireless transmitter is $69. So uh, let's see, it's 180 times two, 360 plus 70, 450 for a pretty complete flash kit. I mean, it's not, not yet. I would want two more if I was doing portraits and things like that. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's a very versatile, very powerful, very versatile flash. And this wireless controller uh, just gives you a lot of flexibility with it. So I strongly recommend it. And I use it all the time. I mean, I, I do a lot of uh, softbox single flash with a reflector of photography, but uh, a lot of times I'll just go key light, fill light and control the flashes from the uh, camera on the tripod. So it's a uh, very nifty. So the other thing that you saw in there, let me see, did I get everything here? Oh, you didn't see it, but I'll strongly recommend you get these for your flash. It's the uh, flash diffuser. And uh, you can see that I got one back in November. Um, it's a, a, a kit that fits right on the flash right here. And then it's got all these adapters that go along with it uh, that are very convenient, very convenient, very usable. So. I like them a lot. It has its own set of filters. That green filter, in case you're asking, is for some fluorescent bulbs. It isn't for all of them. But um, it's not expensive either. It's um, 60, 65 bucks. And you get a, in this case, you get a discount with it. So, uh, but it gives you options. So if you don't have access to soft boxes and things like that, this comes with a uh, white reflector card. It comes with a snoot, it comes with a grid, it comes with several filters that fit right in there. And uh, it comes with a flash diffuser. And yeah, I don't know if you can see it, let me see. It comes with barn doors. Let me see if, the, right there you can see. So right there you'll see in the lower left-hand corner, it comes with that soft ball mount. And what's really cool about this is once you mount the adapter on this, everything else is magnetic. So it has magnets in it and it fits on it. Oh, you know what? You're not seeing any of that, are you? There we go. Okay, so let me go back. Here's the kit. That's how it fits on the flash with all those adapters. There's the round ball one that I was talking about. I'm going to select that. Right there. So uh, fits on there. 
and um, and you'll see those little white lines on there, right, right in here, right there. If I take it off, it's going to go off. I can't do it. Uh, those are magnets. Those are little tiny magnets, and they just everything. Once you put the the mounting thing on, it just has magnets, and you you layer them on. You know, the diffuser, the grid, the uh, barn doors, etc. So it's a it's a very cool little outfit. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to make the mistake of going back because every time I do, I forget to uh, share the screen with you and you do not want to talk. You don't have any idea what I'm talking about. So the other thing that you saw on there, and then now this is the Godox version I, and I could have sworn I've got Godox on there. They're the same exact kit. Uh, you'll find that a lot of things that are made in China are made by one company and then rebranded by uh, several other companies. So Godox is one of those companies when it comes to soft boxes because they make flashes, but they don't make soft boxes. And um, the way that they do this one is they've got the 24 inch box and it comes with this guy right here and it's good that it does because this guy can fit in a lot of other boxes as well so this is basically the flash mount you clamp the flash i'm going to do this there's nobody here to remind me that i'll be making a mistake but so the flash clamps in there just like that right and then this fits into the back of the uh, soft box. Now, um, there are different kinds of mounts, but it supports uh, Bowen's mounts. It supports the ones that come with either the Godox or uh, newer mounts. So it's very convenient. It's, again, these things, they're a little, they're heavy when you pick them up because they're so well built. I mean, this is, this is built to take a beating. Um, and it's adaptable. It also has, I don't know whether you can see it right here, right there. That's if you want to mount an umbrella on it. It has the uh, umbrella hole, I guess. All right. Let me do this so I don't forget. All right. Um, and they make others, if you're just starting, um, because people usually will buy, in my experience, when people make the decision to buy soft boxes, it's for portraiture. And this is a very good single light portrait light, right? If you put it at the right angle, right about there, 45 degrees, you get the catch light in the eye, it lights around the face, um, and it makes a really good portrait. Now, eventually, you're going to want to buy a, a fill light, you're going to want to buy a hair light, you're going to buy a background light to go along with them. They don't necessarily have to be soft boxes. I would say you could do it a uh, good portrait with two soft boxes and two other uh, light sources. So I like these a lot because they're very integrated with uh, what I'm using right now, fit a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. So the uh, 60 centimeters, by the way, is 24 inches. Now, does come with a grid. And the purpose of the grid is to uh, direct the light uh, into more of a square. Now, Again, one of the things that you're going to find out when you use a softbox like this is the further you move it away from your subject. And, and you, you saw that photo uh, that I showed you. It's almost on top, literally, of the set. Uh, that's where the light is the softest. Now you're going to have to go backwards and tune it down a little bit in terms of its control, its intensity. But that's, what you, that's how you want to shoot it. So it's almost on top of the subject, you know, to the extent that you want it almost into the shot, right? So you move it as close as you can without um, injecting it into the shot and then move it back just a little bit. And that's, as that's how close you want the thing. So let me go back. What else did I use? We used the, oh, the Linko. So here's what's cool about this uh, Linko and why I like it so much. So the Linko, uh, it's a boom arm, right? And you can find these. Then the nice thing about the Linko boom arm is that it also adapts, not only can you put a camera on the end of it, it also adapts to holding a reflector of some kind. So if you don't want a straight up and down reflector, but you want the reflector over the shot and you want it over a, at a 45 degree angle, this is what that Linko uh, boom arm enables you to do. And then you balance it with this, uh, this canvas bag. It comes with a canvas bag. And this is Actually, the first time I've seen somebody do this, usually they give you uh, empty sandbags. 
But uh, but one of the things that you learn if you've been doing this enough is that the easiest way to add weight to a boom arm, whether it's, uh, you know, in photography or filmmaking, is to use some sort of water jug, a one gallon jug or a half gallon uh not, not water. Well, there are one gallon water jugs, but a milk carton and clean it out and then uh, balance it out using water and then use that as your weight. And the nice thing about Linko is they give you a canvas bag instead of the other standard uh, light weights, boom arm weights. Uh, they give you a canvas bag that will hold up to a one gallon um, milk container. So you can fill it with water and use it to balance out. And what you're trying to do is the axis point is right here. You'll see it right in there. And you're trying to balance the weight of the camera and the weight of the, the water bottle. And there's two ways to do that. Use the weight itself or just kind of move it up and down, back and forth in the, um, in the um, center point so that you can get it balanced. And that that's the reason you want it balanced is to protect your equipment. Uh, because I can't tell you how many times I've heard stories about people who just put something out on the uh, camera on the end of boom arm, didn't balance it, and halfway th through whatever effort they were going through, uh, it fell, and it goes straight down on the camera, and the camera goes into the Valentine's cakes. So it can get messy. That didn't happen, by the way. So, um, and it's only 40 bucks. It's a good price, and I thought the addition of it being able to hold a reflector is a really good one because there's going to be times where a there's nobody else around b uh, a straight up and down uh, you know uh, a perfectly per perpendicular to the ground angle on your reflector is not what you want so this enables you to customize that angle of your reflector so you get exactly what you want out of it so i want to make sure i covered all the things that we used in this uh, shoot so these um, these are the newer uh, metal light stands, heavy duty light stand kit. They are heavier and more um, rugged than other, the, the black light stands that are, they, as a matter of fact, they promote them as lightweight. Now they are not C stands. And for those of you who know what C stands are, you'll find that they're used in the film industry and they're, they're, they're used primarily because there's always a crew around to, uh, move them and assemble them. If it's just you, a C stand, not only to transport, but to move and to set up is a pain in the bahonkies. And I don't recommend it. So this is the nice medium between one of those lightweight black stands uh, and a C stand uh, because it's, it's very rugged, uh, but it, it comes in much more compact than a C stand, the, the several pieces, excuse me. several pieces uh, that the C-stand requires. So um, this one goes up to 114 inches, which is, oh, am I doing this right? 10 times 12 would be 120. So it's six inches short of 12 feet. That's how high it'll go. The other nice thing about this one, yeah, I don't know, let me see if we've got a close-up of it. So not only do you get a universal adapter with it, right, for either a quarter inch by 20 or three inch, three eighths inch by six. So you can pretty much, it's a standard screw. But the nice, the other nice thing about it is you can put it either vertically in the head, in the light stand head, or uh, horizontally, which you don't often find in other light stands. And it's very convenient because you can do a lot, a lot of things with it uh, when it's uh, in horizontal, um, in a horizontal shape. And uh, it's just good. Just you know, you get to use these things. You you, in my life, in my I don't know, fifty years. Let me see. Is this right? More than fifty years. Fifty-five years of photography. You find a couple of things that really really work well. And these stainless steel light stands. No rust. No. You can get them wet. These uh, newer stainless steel light light stands. A little bit more expensive than a pair of the black ones, for example. Uh, but they're very durable. They're very rugged. And they do everything that you need them to do, including carrying carrying the weight that you'll need them to carry. So again, highly recommend them. You know I use them. You saw in the picture. So let's talk camera for just a little bit. So this is I I have uh, two 
Lumix G7s. I've got a Lumix G9 on order. This is the Lumix G100. It's what they call their vlogging camera. Let me get it right here. Let me go back to full screen. So their uh, vlogging camera. And it comes with this grip, which can also convert into a kind of mini tripod. Uh, it has the full rollout. I think the batteries are dead on this one. Yeah, no battery power remains, it says. It has this full rollout LED panel, so you can hold it like that and do your selfie shot like that. It has microphones on the front. You'll see the microphones right there, the little holes right there in the front and the back. So they call this their vlogging camera. And it is a good vlogging camera, but it's a 20 megapixel sensor in there, which is damn good. It's a micro four thirds and it's a mirrorless camera. It comes with this particular lens. This is a uh, 12 to 32 lens, but like all Lumix uh, mirror, mirrorless cameras, it's a 2x crop factor. So that's actually a 24, it shoots. It's, it is a 12 by 32, but because it's a 2x crop factor, it shoots 24 to 64. So that's kind of a moderate wide angle to a moderate telephoto. 64 would be great for a portrait. But again, it wasn't designed necessarily photography as much as it was for the whole, you know, vlogging, talking, look, I'm out in the field uh, today. And, and it actually has a connection uh, to the camera. It has two buttons here. One is a photo button and the red one is a video button. So if you've got out there in the boonies and you press the video uh, red button, you start making your video. And it's got the, the microphones are surprisingly good. I tested it out when I first got it. The reason I like it is because it's light in comparison to the other cameras that I own. And, um, and I like it especially for the flat lay shots because you're not putting a lot of weight on the end of that boom arm. But it also takes, it has a removable lens, right? So it takes my complete collection of Lumix lenses. And the one that I use most, most often for the, other than the flat lays, the flat lays, you need a wider angle lens. But the one that I use most often is this uh, Sigma 60 millimeter F.28 macro lens. And I like this a lot. And again, because that, that Lumix is a 2x crop factor. Um, this shoots at 120. This is it shoots on the camera. It's 120 millimeters, f 2.8, uh, and it's a macro as well. So it gets those real nice uh, close-up shots. So um, the only thing I that's I worry about. I don't know whether you can hear it. When it's not on the camera, it has something rattling inside. And I actually, when I got it, I called the manufacturer. Actually, I bought it from b &H Photo. I didn't call the manufacturer. I called b &H Photo and I says, is it supposed to be doing that? And he said, put it on the camera. If you want you put on the camera, whatever is happening in there, uh, it doesn't happen anymore. Now, Sigma does make other... Um, other sizes in this, uh, in this particular... Um, not their brand, but their model right? There's Sigma art lenses. Uh, and they're very, very good lenses, very sharp. Um, and of course, because they have the sensors, they come with the, the uh, Panasonic sensors on the back, everything is auto. So uh, it's very convenient. You know, once you move away from the camera, once you're tethered, you can control f-stop and shutter speed and all of those things uh, from your, uh, from your, um, From your iPad, in my case, or or whatever the the Panasonic um, app will run on any smartphone or any tablet, including Android. And the other day, I found it on my Chromebook. So I haven't tried it on the Chromebook. I don't need to because the app, uh, iPad screen is actually bigger than the one on my Chromebook. But yeah, that's they designed it uh, to do that. But the the exciting thing for me is to be able to communicate with my iPad. So I just walk around the shoot. Whatever I'm, you know, whatever I'm shooting with the iPad, and I never have to touch the camera. So, it's a it's a pretty cool little um, practical. So they had them on sale here for a while. I don't know if they do they have this one on six forty seven. So when I got it, um, I I got it for five seventy nine. So it was on sale. Plus I had some sort of discount at the time, something that Amazon was giving me. But it's still a great little camera. And again, uh, I can take any one of my 
Lumix lenses and mount it on there. And you can see one of the benefits of this, the MFT, the Panasonic MFT, is the size of the equipment. It's, it's small in comparison to uh, others. And if you're past the stage where you're having to make a living, if I was, if I was still making a living at photography, um, I would own one of the brand names like Nikon or Canon or Sony. And I would have to test them because I know that a lot has a lot of water has gone under the bridge when it comes to uh, uh, cameras. Um, I would start with the Nikon because kind of that's where I, back in the I don't know sixties seventies that that was my first camera was a Nikon, um, and it was up until I retired in two thousand and ten, and then I, I switched out. I gave my Nikon equipment to my son, and switched over to Lumix just because didn't have to make a living in it anymore. I was perfectly satisfied with what the Loomis could do. So let's see, is there anything else that we used today? I did use my, um, I did use the uh, DJI OM4 to make the little video. It's a handheld three axis smartphone uh, gimbal. Um, so I, I have, this is probably my, so I bought the, Act, uh, the uh, DJI Osmo before it had a number, the original Osmo. That's what they called it. It was much bigger than all of this, and it had integrated camera. And that was Osmo 1 and Osmo 2. And then by Osmo 3, they decided just to do the uh, smartphone thing, because by that time, smartphones, you know, the cameras and the video collection capability on smartphones. So I waited till Osmo 4 came out. Uh, and I got that, and like all my DJI products, I have a couple of DJI drones, and I've owned drones since the original Phantom One DJI uh, drones. I've never, I've never bought another gimbal other than DJI, and another never bought another drone other than DJI. So you can tell I'm kind of committed to their stuff. There is a later version that's in here. It's the OM5, and uh, it has the selfie stick. In addition to everything else, it gives you a selfie stick. I don't know what the difference in price is. Let's see. So this one is 159 And the OM4 is 148 So there's a $9 difference between the two if you need the selfie stick. And I'm sure there's – it comes uh, – one of the things that you get when you get the DJI, it comes – with an application that you download onto your smartphone. And now the gimbal talks to your smartphone. So it's uh, it's very cool. So this is the other softbox. This is a Godox softbox. I like this a lot because it's length. It's 12 by 24 or 9 by 35. And it's cool because you can uh, you can put it at that kind of angle. And it's the top is almost over the center of your subject. So it makes it it makes it really good. But it has the Bowens mount on it, the aluminum mount. There's, so there's two things different from, from the newer or the Godox 24 inch uh, square softbox that I was talking about. They basically pop open and there's a place to slip the, uh, the flash mount in there. It's, it's real easy. This one, the 30 inch has the Bowens mount and it has uh, the springs. So it takes you a little bit to put it together. You have to have patience once, as a matter of fact, once you have it, once you have it assembled, find a place in your closet so you don't have to disassemble it again. Uh, because it's one of the things about soft boxes that I didn't like. There was a lot of disassembling, but it doesn't come with an adapter for your uh, for your um, speed light. So you have to buy this separately. And you can see that both newer and Godox sell the mount separately. It's right there, right. Now, when you buy the 24 by 24, it comes with this. So I, I bought the 24s. I bought a pair of the 24 by 24 before I bought the 9 by 35. So I already had two of these. But if you buy the 9 by 35, uh, you'll need to buy one of these as well in order to make it work with your speed light or any other light. I mean, you can have, you know, if you have any other continuous light or LED light or other uh, Bowens mount flash, uh, it'll mount straight into that um, It'll mount straight into it. So I don't have any of those. So I didn't show you these today. I didn't use them. They're the uh, Fazistan one by two foot LED continuous light, and I bought a pair of them. Uh, they weren't. I don't remember them being this much when I bought them. Um, I think they were on sale at the time, 
And I liked them, except I, I, you know, I've been using flash for most of my career and I find it harder to control continuous light than flash. And I'm sure people can make an argument just the opposite of that, but uh, I'm, I tend to lean towards flash. Uh, but these things put out an amazing amount of light. I mean, they re it was really a lot of light. And then um, I made a mistake, that, and this was my fault. It's not their fault. So I left this, I, I built it up, and I was going to use it. And when I'm doing photography, I'll spend an afternoon doing photography. That means the flashes, if you're using a flash, you know, like I said, that, that shot that I took last night was 46 different photos. Well, that happened over three or four hours. Well, the mistake I made was I left this on the entire time. And that was pro that's the mistake. I shouldn't have left it on. And what happened was it melted. So the, the, the uh, let me see if they actually show it here. Hang on. So there's a, a nylon soft cover that goes over. There, there it is right there. So there's a 25% diffuser over all these lights. And these lights go on the back of the frame. You assemble the frame. Then the LED panel goes on the back of the frame. And this diffuser goes on the front of the frame. Well, for whatever reason, because I left it up there, it... Uh, it heated up enough, and there's not a lot of heat, but it was enough so that it melted the glue on the back of this Velcro, right, that was on the frame that held this diffuser. So when I went to take the diffuser off, the other side of the Velcro came off with it. And so, and I haven't done it yet, I'm going to have to super glue it back on so that doesn't happen again. Uh, but again, that was my fault, not paying attention. Um, I did let the vendor know that's what had happened and suggest they use a glue that maybe isn't so uh, heat um, sensitive because it is an LED lamp and it's electrical. So it does produce some heat, not a lot. But if you like continuous light, this is for you. I did a couple of shots. I don't know if I have them. Let me see if I've got them in the, in the albums over here. So that, I know that one right there. That was done with that lamp, um, and it puts out plenty of light. No problems with the with the light. Very soft, uh, and again, it was right over it. Let me see if I can find that. I, nope, not that one. Let me see what I've got. Here it is. So you can see it right there. So do I have the shot? <laughs> I don't have the shot. So uh, that was the shot. It was onions and had the reflector out front. And then I had uh, the uh, LED continuous light up there. Puts out an amazing amount of light, I gotta tell you. So if you need light, you can get it from there. And they're not, you know, not that expensive. I wish I had a finished shot for you. Here's another one. So that was the peppers uh, that, that I shot. You can see it's my, my kitchen. My poor kitchen is, it's a good thing I am single because uh, if I was, Married with, a, like, if my family was still around, they'd be yelling at me for the mess that I made. And leave sometimes overnight. All right. I think that's it for tonight. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. And uh, I'll answer them. I'm very good at answering them. If you want to text me a, uh, a question, you can text it to the number that you see in the, the scroll, 202-815-11. Uh, seven one, and eventually, when we get a number of viewers back, we'll uh, visit with you and maybe have you some um, inbound phone calls, which will be fun. I like taking those. All right, thank you for joining me tonight. We'll see you next Thursday. Not what today is next Thursday, seven o'clock Mountain Time. We'll see you then.